Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about cosmic radiation. Now, is cosmic radiation dangerous for you as a pilot or cabin crew? Is it dangerous for you as a passenger? What does it actually do? Well, as you can hear from the word, it comes from the cosmos. So it comes from outside of the planet. Uh, cosmic radiation primarily comes from the sun, but also from surrounding galaxies and other stars. And it's constantly bombarding the planet. The planet is being protected, however, by the magnetic um, field that surrounds the whole planet and also by the Earth atmosphere. Uh, the um, magnetic field will come and it will surround the Earth and it will come in towards the poles. Okay, um, That means that some of the radiation that is being diverted by the magnetic field is being led in towards the poles. And you can see that by the beautiful northern lights. But this also means that there are higher radiation or cosmic radiation levels in different parts of the planet. And since the atmosphere is also protecting us from the cosmic radiation, it also means that as you fly higher up in the atmosphere, you'll be subjected to more cosmic radiation. So as you fly higher and closer to the poles, you will get more radiation. And as you get down towards the equator and at slightly lower altitude, you will be exposed less to the radiation. So the background radiation that all of us that's walking around the Earth is being subjected to is about two and a half millisieverts. If you work in a field that is being exposed to radiation, but it's less than one millisievert per year, then it doesn't need to be monitored. If it's expected to be more than one millisievert per year, so if you're working in a nuclear power plant, for example, or as cabin crew pilots or indeed astronauts, then you have to monitor the amount of, of radiation that you're being exposed to. So in the case of the airline industry, um, as the radiation increases with height up to about 66,000 feet, below 26,000 feet, or if you're flying less than about 200 hours per year, you're expected to not exceed that one millisievert extra. But as you fly higher than that and more hours, then it is more likely that you will come above that. So that means that all airlines out there um, do require to monitor the amount of radiation that the, their flight crew and cabin crew are being exposed to. And the way they do that below 39,000 feet is by using computer models. So the computer models, um, they assess how much radiation that the flight crew and cabin crew is being subjected to based on where. It's especially one study that I found really interesting, which was made on 10,000 male pilots over four decades. Now, those 10,000 pilots were uh, compared to a group of 10,000 normal males that did not fly. And what they found was in the normal test group, um, they found about 455 cases of cancer. And in the pilot test group, they found 466, which means that there was a tiny little increase in cancer risk. But the main, the main thing that they found with this study that was that within those people who did get cancer in the pilot group, uh, there was about a two to three fold increase in skin cancer. So there seems to be there seems to be a higher risk for skin cancer now. In this study, they did not control for things like um, lifestyle. So, for example, they did not check if those pilots were flying to sunny beaches and doing a lot of sunbathing. Well, that could increase the cancer risk as well. Um, they did also find a slight increase in prostate cancer, but that increase was only found in uh, pilots who were flying long haul, not in short haul pilots. And the scientists do think that that could have less to do with cosmic radiation, and more to do with things like changes in the circadian rhythm and possibly sitting down for extended periods of time. So the jury is still a little bit out whether or not it is you know, if there's actually an increase in risk of being a pilot due to cosmic radiation or not, but there's still uh, studies being made. Every time you fly in an airplane, you're exposed to radiation from cosmic rays, which are high energy particles from outer space. Pilots and flight attendants are even classified by the Center for Disease Control as radiation workers. But does that radiation make flying dangerous? Well, no. Even if you're a frequent flyer, you probably don't have anything to worry about. See, we're all exposed to very small amounts of ionizing radiation every day. The kind that has enough energy to knock out electrons from atoms, so it can also break chemical bonds or damage DNA. But your body's built to handle things going wrong in your cells by fixing 
replacing them or replacing any damaged cells with new ones. All this background radiation comes from radon in the air and uranium and thorium in the soil. You even have some radioactive carbon-14 and potassium-40 inside your body, like all living things on Earth. Plus, you're still exposed to cosmic rays right here on the ground. When you fly, you're just exposed to more, since there's less atmosphere above you. Around the world, all this background radiation gives people an average annual dose of 2.5 millisieverts. That's one of the units used to describe radiation. In the US, it's more like 3 millisieverts per year. The International Commission on Radiological Protection recommends that you keep your annual dose, beyond all that background stuff, under 1 millisievert. To put that in perspective, you'd have to fly back and forth from New York to London for around 200 hours to reach that number. But going a little over isn't necessarily dangerous. Most pilots and flight attendants have recommended dose limits of 20 millisieverts per year, or 6 millisieverts per year if you work in the EU. And the risk of cancer is only thought to increase with doses of around 50 to 100 millisieverts per year, which is way above any exposure from flying home a couple times. Some studies suggest that flight crews have an increased risk for some cancers and reproductive disorders. Like one 2009 study from the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health showed that pilots with more flight experience had more chromosomal translocations in their DNA. This is basically when parts of your chromosomes switch places when they shouldn't, and it's widely accepted as a sign of exposure to ionizing radiation and some risk of cancer, especially leukemia and lymphoma. But there are also studies that suggest flight crews don't face any increased health risks, and should just be aware of how much they're working if they're pregnant. So science is still working on this one, but as a passenger, you've got nothing to worry about. Thanks for asking, and thanks especially... Is there any truth to pilots getting more exposed to cosmic radiation because you're up front? Well, we sit, you know, so high in the atmosphere that, yeah, I mean, pilots will, you know, they have pretty high risk of cancer, things like that from the radiation, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of sad. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, there, there's actually a lot of, I saw some list one time, you might know about this too, um, they said that, uh, uh, like, radiation pharmacists, like, I guess the folks that do, like, chemo and such, yeah. they have real high exposure rates, pilots have high exposure rates. Um, you see, at least they're dealing with yeah, that, but right. you are just up in the sky. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and it diff it's different, too, like, if you're taking off from here to go to Asia and you're going up over the poles where it gets real thin on the ozone, yeah. then it can be even worse for you. Um, but we have like sun shades that block some UV, things like that. Um, but nothing could block. No, no. And we actually have uh, ozone scrubbers in the airplane, filters for that sort of thing. Not, not the airplane we fly because it doesn't go that way. But a lot of airplanes do. I mean, it's the only way I know to provide. No, no. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's a choice you make. I think any job probably has some risks like that, but. Yeah, I mean, I guess. You know, it, sounds, it sounds like the. United Airlines? Uh, yeah, United 2066. It sounds like the. Like sci fi. Or to get cosmic radiation. Yeah, yeah. So I there mean, is some truth. There's, yeah, yeah, there is. Well, stay safe. I appreciate your concern, man. Bye bye.